Um, yeah, yeah. You know, when when you get on a plane and you can't take all your luggage, oh, I was walking around with, um, mm -hmm. uh, you a toilet show bag. You yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that's a man bag. bag. Yeah. 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 Well, that's more of a briefcase. But, um, uh, <laughs> fashion overrides any considerations, any practical, <laughs> pragmatic considerations, but I love even I now. I remember, curiously, I remember seeing a photograph of a young man, this was in the early waves of what we called new romanticism yeah. then, a young man standing on a slag heap, you know, an actual kind of, you know, the waist near a mine area, and he, he was wearing a, a small Scottish hat, uh, some sort of a t-shirt with a radical design on and a kilt and some heavy hobnail boots, and this was in Sheffield. And the note underneath said, you know, it's all very well dressed like this in London, but you wear this in Sheffield, you've got to be hard <laughs> as nails. <laughs> <laughs> and he was carrying it off. There's some truth in that, yeah. Bricky's in eyeliner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but but it, I guess it did. I mean, it, it, was it while you were up there that you embraced this kind of look, or did you wait till you came out to London before you really threw, threw yourself into it? Yeah, I know uh, the history of pop is written that everything emanated out of the Blitz Club in London, but uh, I have to say... Yeah. Or all around the, the UK for some strange reason in 1980-81, I guess. Uh, yeah, men and women were experimenting with their looks. People so that's the beautiful up. thing. Yeah, yeah, that's be the real story, doing it in Bradford and... Yeah, uh, that's much more interesting. A little... Probably, t like you say, tougher than walking down Oxford Street in London. I guess. But without wishing to sound like two old men saying yeah, things sorry. are better than men. No, no. Uh, but it is interesting that you don't see people experimenting quite as much, or maybe we just don't go out that much. But, you know, I, I know back then it was people deliberately went way out there on a limb. You, the people who did go to those clubs would wear green face paint. And they'd have, you know, they'd have their hair ab about a foot and a half high. That's no exaggeration, really. It does sound ridiculous now. Yeah, but it, it was for that moment when you walk into a bar and all heads would turn. Yeah. And you'd, no matter you'd, how you're facing you a look. beating, basically, okay. yeah. What was the silliest thing you wore? What was the silliest look you strove for? You were always quite restrained. You never went for the full-on, you know, you didn't go like, suddenly dressed like Cecil B. DeMille one day and a, and a, and a <laughs> Scottish kind of cloth to another. Yeah. Taste police have been to my house. What did you wear? Yeah. What was the worst outfit you wore? Can you remember wearing well, out to those clubs the most in ridiculous period? outfit was, uh, cost me something like £1,200 back in the mid-80s and it was a uh, Shetland you in the wool. band then already, Yeah, it was in the band and I did, um, walk down South Mountain Street and buy a, sh a you know, like a Shetland wool jumper, but yeah. it had Shetland wool trousers as well, Jean Paul Gaultier. <laughs> And I went that evening to appear on a TV show, <laughs> well, and unfortunately it just looked like a baggy tracksuit. Yeah, well, yeah, it must look like someone <laughs> bought, hot. Someone bought a, a, a big lamb in yeah. for the shearing. <laughs> you know, that's one fashion that's never really returned. But yeah. can you imagine the nobles down the side of the you, have you, you haven't still got that by any chance, have you? You know, I think I might some. Oh, yeah. we've got to see that yeah, come out. Yeah, yeah, You'll be lucky if it hasn't been eaten by moths, though. Yeah, that's probably uh, the truth. Let's put some music on. Now, we should put something because uh, you're you're a fan of classic music, and I guess do you like much modern music? What do you like? The sort of not. I don't mean obviously contemporary stuff. I know you listen to, but what's cutting edge that you listen to? Is there stuff you listen to which is uh, sometimes a bit of a, a bit of an ask? Yeah, like uh, rhinoceros bands like that. Gold rhinoceros. Frat. I've never even heard of rhinoceros. Gold frat we love. Yes. Um, rhinoceros. I'll check them out. Do you ever listen to early uh, prog rock or experimental bands like Can? No, I was definitely more an R and B. Um, yeah. You want to go and give Can a listen? I've been listening to some Are you Can. Are you going to yeah. play some Can now? No, I'm not going to play some Can now. I wouldn't. I wouldn't inflict oh. that on people against their will. That would be cruel. But uh, if you feel the urge to download some Can, go out there and do. It. I bought some on the iTunes. Oh, that's quite. It's quite something. Atomic Rooster. Oh, I remember Tommy Wilson. Mm. What do we have now? We I were going to play. Nash. We were going to play. Oh, there's, some, there's some gold frap being loaded in the system. I'll tell you speak. what we were going to play earlier as well, uh, Martin. We were going to play Rip, Rig, and Panic. Remember yeah, them? Yeah, yeah. But they were one of those bands that came out at that time who were the hype band that was so much greater than the band itself. I mean, they were quite good. Out of the pop group. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. The pop group were good as well. Oh, bloody! Yeah, we could talk for hours. What are we going to play then? This is gold frap. A and E. It's a nice sound, isn't it? A and E. Gold frap. That's a nice sound. Oh, you should have heard us while that was going on. Me and Martin <laughs> we were exchanging <laughs> theories about why kids today don't do this and why they mm -hmm. do that and why don't, we've. Mm -hmm. Come up with a theory, basically, they've got it too easy. <laughs> yeah. we we because it was boring, wasn't it, about them when you were a kid, and now they've got 400 channels and they've got everything on, they watch movies on their phones and TV and... It'd be nice to try for 12 months, just, uh, well, it's probably bad for the industry, but three three TV channels and, uh... Let's take, let's take... It wouldn't work, work, it wouldn't work. Well, those I'm a love that one. Let's take, let's, uh, steal someone's teenagers, right, and put yeah. them on an island, uh, yeah. and recreate the 70s, yeah. right, and see what they come up with. Yeah, see how they evolve. See yeah. how they like waking up on a Sunday, no TV till midday, and all you've got is Jack Hargrew showing you how to make a coracle out of twigs. <laughs> That's how it used to be, isn't it? That's how it used to be. And then, and then what? Nothing, nothing to look forward to but songs and praise, and maybe, if you're lucky, if it was Easter, Disney time. Mm. That was it. Yeah, you get a James Bond on Christmas Day. That, well, yeah, once in your life. Yeah. Oh, James Bond. Anyway, <laughs> uh, what are you doing now? What are you doing work wise? Obviously, you've got this new single out. You're, I know you've just come off one of the tours. So you've done uh, one of the Here and Now tours. We sound like the... so much fun. Yeah, they are. It's like who, who just was the tour on this of one? duty. Uh, Rick Astley, Banana Rama. Yeah, we just travelled all around the UK playing arenas. And I, uh, I like Rick Astley a lot. He's a very. He's, I only met him fantastic. once in the eighties, but he was a charming bloke. I very much liked him, and I like. Yeah, he's a very gracious man. Very Never gracious. Never gonna man. give you up. That's kind of doing the internet rounds, isn't it? It's become a big internet thing. 
There's a lot of Rick rolling around there at the moment, I believe. <laughs> um, <laughs> I did see some footage um, where, if you hit a site, uh, Rick's video sh pops up. Yeah, I think yeah. It happened about 16 trillion times. It comes up accidentally. Yeah, to the extent where um, a baseball team were using, uh, they were voting. You, you had to vote on which uh, tune they were going to have in New Jersey for the team, and, um, and it was his. You know, had, his came up, yeah. Oh, and it incensed the audience. <laughs> 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 uh, hey, wh where are the rest of the original ABC lineup these days? Are you in touch with them? Are you friends yeah, with um, them? Well, David Palmer, a uh, guy who played drums. I'm going to see him uh, next week. We start an American tour with the with the Human League, and then um, yeah, we play in December again on a, the Steel City tour. Oh, that sounds like beginning. Hey, in now December. You, you know uh, all of my heart. That one. What was that called? That was called all, all of my heart. heart. Okay. Uh, no, no. I'm thinking of Poison Hour. Sorry, shoot that Poison Hour. <coughs> the woman's voice on it was your jilted girlfriend, or she jilted you. Is that right? Um, I don't know. No, not on that one. That's no. what. That's how no. there's one song, and there, that's, that's what legend has it to be. No, I used to step in and do the high parts as well, actually. But no, sometimes. there's one woman's voice where she speaks to one of them. Which one's that on that first album? Um, come on, mm, can't remember. Oh, you know can't what's remember. going on? You've no, been all. No, no. There's a girl who speaks to you who had been your girlfriend. I oh, know, no, uh, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you loved me, but it seems you didn't care. One, yeah, and yeah, she yeah. says, I care enough to know I can never love you. Now, who did that she was? worked in Psalm East. But I yeah. thought she was your girlfriend. No, no, she was well, not. That's, this is Sorry. an interesting Sorry. revelation. Right. Because that in, that the in that book I'm talking about, they talk about the fact that this was a girl who had actually broken your heart. Yeah. And it was a very kind of like odd, deconstructed, postmodernist way of looking at the world, saying, the girl who broke my heart will actually do the voice as the girl who broke my heart on the record about this girl who she broke my heart. What did it? I have to dispel that. Oh, no, I'm disappointed. No. Sorry you, about that. Uh, just go. Sorry to just leave. I'm yeah. done. You, can't, you can't come on and pop myths. You can't come yeah. on and <laughs> deflate, you know, legendary tales. What's the point of that? Where's your sense of your own history? Um, I'm terribly sorry, but uh, the truth is always more important than uh, mm. your own history. Yeah, but never as entertaining. Never as yeah, yeah. entertaining. Now, I've written, uh, written, rewritten my past a few times. Yeah. Oh, I see. That's what's happening here then. <laughs> I see. Yeah, yeah. Now she's just a receptionist, eh? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> That's how you have your revenge all these years later. <laughs> okay, what are we going to play? We should bug a bit more music on before this we is say goodbye. Desmond Decker. Lovely. Desmond Decker. Is he still with us? I think no, he is. No, he? he's not with us oh, anymore. He died. No. Well, Martin Fry is still with us, I'm delighted to say. <laughs> both, both on the planet and here on the show. Yes. Uh, ABC's new album, Traffic, is out right now. We played the single Love is Strong. It sounded great. That's out. It's not out until the middle of August. People sort of sneak it out early, don't they, for radios and stuff. I came down early. wanted yeah. to see you guys. Yeah, it's mm. very nice to see you. And uh, Martin's been touring, but you're, you're going to go off to the States next, you were saying, is that what? Yeah, I am with the Human League, but we come back in December and do the Steel City Tour. How is Human League climaxes holding up? Still... in Sheffield oh, wow, on December the 13th. Something. Sheffield Arena. Plug. Sheffield Plug. Arena. Plug. Well, no, feel free. <laughs> Sheffield Arena. I That'll saw be... Phil and the girls last week, yeah, and they're in fine form. Because he shaved all the hair off now, yes. when he started losing, which is the way to go, I guess, if you well, he's looking very Matrix, yeah, yeah he's looking yeah. very suave yeah. and, uh... He, he's carrying it. Yeah, he's, he's getting uh, away with it. What, now, uh, where are Heaven 17 these days? You got any idea? They are also on the tour. They were. Oh, it's awesome. fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I love it. I might come along and just pretend it's still the 80s. <laughs> just come along. I'll see if Put your Mellotron down. Yeah. I'll come find on. out. So I'll find on. A, 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 a suit with huge shoulders. I've got a jacket yeah, somewhere with yeah. big, really big shoulders. It's so big you have to go through doors sideways. Yeah. And when I put them on immediately, I feel like Nick Kershaw. <laughs> immediately. <laughs> to burst into song. Yeah, in there. <laughs> I feel like Nick Kershaw in that album where he's everything's on, on weird paper and moving the figure on his suits. Yeah, it's one of those albums. Uh, Martin, lovely to see you again. Thank Continued you. success with ABC. Thank uh, you and I hope much. your health holds up. I know you had that all scare good. years ago, but you're through all that now. I'm fine for Love is strong. The new single is out this summer, but the album uh, Traffic is out now. And if you get the chance to catch ABC Live, not only on the tour, but also Sheffield will be great in December. Yeah. I, might, I might stuff. even journey up. <laughs> all right, take it easy, Martin. Thanks for joining us. Join us again next week if you can. This is BBC Radio 2, online, on digital, and on 8891 FM. <laughs>